I'm in a bit of a predicament. There's so much herbal experience I need, but so few options I can think of. I reset June's Effigy Incubator D&D, then did July's twice with another monthly reset token. From the D&D, you get these effigies that you could fill up like an urn. Every time you get 60,000 experience in one of the four skills or a combination of the four skills that those effigies are tied to, you can crack it open and then you get a lamp that you can use on one of the four skills that filled up the effigy. But sometimes you get a dragonkin lamp, which you can use on any skill. With 30 of these effigies, I'll get maybe three or four dragonkin lamps. So, I mean, that's some herbal XP, but that's not really enough to get me to 107. So I guess troll invasion? I mean, there's a new month. I can go do that, get that XP book. It gets me to 106 Herblore, and I could make Elder Overloads now. Maybe I can make Elder Overloads to 107. Eh, the problem is, from scratch, making Super Potions, then Extremes, the Overloads, the Supremes, the Elders... You know, it's worth 2,500 XP each, but ugh, geez, I still need 2.5 million experience to get to 107, so that's that's a thousand... that's a thousand Elder Overloads. I'd probably be able to use them, they'd be useful. That's... that's... there's no question there, but goddamn. That would take a, it would be faster just to make the bone bombs than to gather all the materials for that. So I'm at a loss. Should I, should I just give in and make the bone bombs? Hey. What? I got an idea. Down here. I know you can do. What the hell? I don't, is, is this some kind of metaphor or something? No, it's just, I had the idea and thought it'd be, well, not funny, but just different. I guess. And you know, when something gets stuck in your head, you just gotta follow through with it. Obsessive thoughts and whatnot, you know? Yeah, makes sense. Of course it makes sense. I'm you, but a face hand. Is this permanent? Ain't even real, man. Narratively, this is a temporary non sequitur merely used to express information to the audience in the form of a dialogue rather than a monologue. In reality, you're just talking to your hand. Hmm. All right, anyway, here's what you gotta do. Get 90 room crafting. Explain. A lot of XP is locked behind having 90 plus in every skill. There's a couple post quest lamps, the Terran and Task set. But 90 rune crafting? I hate rune crafting. You got the effigies. There's like 300,000 rune crafting XP just sitting there. And farming will fill those up in no time. Then just finish up with soul rune crafting. Do you think all those lamps will get me to 107 herbivore? Dunno. Actually, I do know since this is all after the fact. But for the sake of the video, I don't know. But now I must go. My job here is done. Goodbye. I'll never forget you, me. <laughs> so, so dumb. Alright, my hand face is right. There's a lot of experience hidden away behind 90 room crafting, so today we'll be claiming all that experience. That means doing the entirety of the Falador and Karamja task sets, the Elite Fremenic task set, and the Elite Terranin task set. Falador is easy. I've already got all the requirements for that one squared away, or at least they're all boostable. I just need to actually do the tasks. I was able to knock it out in a very inefficient hour, and claim a total of 176,000 experience. It's an old task set, so the item reward is a bit meh, but the 5% boost to the Artisan's Workshop will come in handy when I start up my smithing grind. As my face hand explained, the effigies are filled quite easily with farming. Dinosaurs give a ton of XP per stage, and it's likely I'll fill up multiple effigies in one farm run, checking maybe four or five dinosaurs. Every time I crack open one of the effigies, I will use the lamp on runecrafting so I can get to 90 faster, so basically I'm training runecrafting with farming. And if I get a dragonkin lamp, I'll just use that on Arbor. Once I got to the point where I only needed about 100,000 more XP for 90 runecrafting, I just did some soul runecrafting. It's really easy, the idea is to fill the altar with 100 charges, each charge requiring 4 essence, so you need 400 essence and you charge it in batches of 100 since the altar can only hold a max of 100 essence. Once you have 100 charges, you go to the soul altar via the abyss with a demonic skull and you get a big XP drop. You only need 90 rune crafting to craft the runes, not to charge the altar, so you can train with soul runes as early as 79 with extreme rune crafting potions. And now that we have 90 rune crafting, we can get a bunch of herblore XP. You know, it would be really cool if you could actually train herblore by making potions. Jagex should, uh, Jagex should look into that. Take 9 wool to a loom and make the level 90 milestone cape. This is why I needed 90 room crafting for the elite Terran and task set. This is this is the only reason. It's it's to make this cape. Finishing the task set gives us 160,000 herbler XP in the form of lamps and 50 motherload shards. We can exchange 10 of them with Wythian once a day for a roll on the motherload maw loot table. And fortune smiled upon me this day for Wythian gave us an ancient effigy. Another dragonkin lamp for Herblore. Now that we have 90 plus in all skills, we can collect the post quest lamp from Zamorak's hideout. This chest right here, 96,000 Herblore XP. Easy.
I hadn't been talking about this, but every now and then I come to the Barbarian course and complete a few dozen advanced laps. You get an Agile Top as a reward when you successfully finish the advanced course 250 times. But I sure as hell wasn't going to do that all in one sitting, so this last bit of the grind wasn't much of a grind at all. A task in the Fremenix set is completing the course while wearing the Agile Top, so this is the primary reason why I hadn't completed the Elite tasks yet. Agility sucks. What doesn't suck is finishing the Elite tasks. We get another 160,000 Herbler experience and the Fremenic Sea Boots 4, which are actually kind of useful. When worn, you do more damage to the Dagonoth Kings, and the Enchanted Liar now has teleport options to a bunch of Fremenic related locations. Pretty useful for clue scrolls. Now, Karamja. Nothing about it is difficult. You need a fire cape, but that isn't much of a problem nowadays. The worst part, for Iron Men specifically, is trading Gabuti for a gem machete. To get a machete, you need to give Gabuti three cut gems, opal, jade, or topaz, and a gout tuber. The only way to get a gout tuber is from the Taiwo Wanai cleanup minigame. You cut down these jungle patches, and when you clear it completely, there's a 1% chance that a gout tuber plant will spawn. The gout tuber costs over 5 mil on the Grand Exchange. Needless to say, it's a colossal pain in the ass to get, and Iron Men got no choice but to get it themselves. What's worse is that this is a medium task. It's the most time-consuming and painful task, and it's not even a leap. Well, time to get to work. Will it take me five minutes? Five hours? Five days? Who knows? And face knows. Finally, Topaz Machete. Let's just disassemble that. Okay, alright, we're done here. Time to become the champion of the fight pits. I was able to best in combat another player that totally isn't me on another account. All of these tasks net us a total of 156,000 Herbalor XP. With how long that Gout Tuber hunt took, it feels like an insult that this task set gives less XP in total than just the elite tasks for other areas. Let's grab another huge limb from Aris, and now that I think of it, there's probably a bunch of post-quest XP I haven't claimed yet. You can actually check in the achievement tab to see what XP rewards you might have missed. For instance, you can get a few combat XP lamps from Azanadra in the temple at Sintistan after completing Fate of the Gods. And if you're an idiot, you can accidentally use one of them on hit points. But I mean, who would, who would do that, right? <laughs> I left some prayer XP near Guthix's corpse. I think you need 90 prayer to claim it and I just forgot to. There's also Philippe Carnelian. Every 50 quest points you can find him somewhere in Gaelinor and he'll give you an experience lamp each time for a total of 60,000 experience. Also his final location is in the Tsar City, a very convenient spot for him to be in when you're doing master clues. Lastly, we're going to grab the Tier 90 Temporal Lamp in Gulvis Manor, worth 96,000 experience. And since we're in the manor anyway, we'll finish the replay and get another huge XP lamp. With all this XP, I am now close enough to 107 that I don't mind making Vone Bombs the rest of the way. We're talking maybe 100, not 1,000. And that's 107. I think I'll make 5 or 600 Vone Bombs in total. It should be more than enough to finish this Carapac task. Remember Carapac? Remember what kickstarted this Herblore grind? Yeah, let's get back to that. I got a bit of advice in the comments of my last video, incorporated a lot of it and ended up with this pretty effective strategy or at least I think it was I think I think it's effective I mean maybe 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 it's not perfectly optimal but it, I mean it worked for me I immediately use death swiftness and chuck a von bomb at Karapak I build up Adrenaline until he uses his Zippy Zappy stun ability when he raises his staff, but before he brings it back down, if you run under him, the spell doesn't get cast, and that means we won't spawn clones in the following phases to do the same thing. And apparently, you can cast a channeled ability while standing under him without being pushed out from under him, so I always used Rapid Fire while standing under him. Then I unload as many thresholds as possible while standing in Death Swiftness before Carapac starts doing his slam attacks. During the slams, I focus on bleeds and maintaining the stacks of puncture I have on him. Just a little bit of micromanaging. Also, when I remembered, I would switch to soul split since protection from magic doesn't really 
do anything, and getting a little bit of healing from the Soul Split doesn't hurt. He usually has less than 70,000 HP when he's done doing his slamming. A couple thresholds are enough to phase him without him doing the landing walls. At the start of the next phase, and the following phases, I throw a Vone Bomb to refresh the debuff. I also continue running under Carapac to avoid the Zippy Zaps, but now that I have the Warp Time ability, I use it while standing under him while avoiding the Zippy Zaps, then cast Death Swiftness. Before Warp Time expires, I try to build up just enough adrenaline to shoot off an EOF spec. If I don't, then the adrenaline I build up while waiting for warp time to finish would otherwise be wasted. When I get full adrenaline back, I use as many thresholds as I can within death swiftness before he starts hopping all over the place. I dodge the slams, use bleeds, and usually he's close enough to push to 50k before he summons the lightning. The next two phases are the same. The final phase is actually the easiest, but also the most dangerous. After he enrages and he begins attacking me, I use warp time, cast devotion, then use quick thresholds like salt the wound, snapshot, and maybe an EOF spec. When warp time expires, I use devotion again and dump as much adrenaline as possible into Carapac, then he dies. Repeat this until the task is over. Not much later, I got a scripture of Jass, a great little item to go with all the manuscript pages I've been getting. Like all God and Elder God books, it has a 6.6% .6 chance of activating. When this book activates, all damage over the next 17 ticks, about 10 seconds, is counted. When the effect ends, 20% of that damage is dealt to the top target, capping at 30,000. It's not the best Elder God book, but the only other options I have are the regular God books, and farming pages for those is much less reliable. Regardless, I was able to get a sub 3 minute kill after getting the scripture, so I think it might have had something to do with it. Unfortunately, I didn't get any interesting drops for the rest of the task, except on the last kill I got another scripture. Kinda bittersweet, but it's a drop. I really wanted Greater Concentrated Blast, but, you know, can't have everything. I got three uniques this task, so, you know, three uniques and 133 kills is above drop rate, so I guess, I guess I can't complain. He drops three loot piles each kill, there are three different uniques, each unique has a 1 in 700-ish drop chance, so it ends up being every kill you have a 1 in 84 chance of getting a unique. I got three uniques and 133 kills, so I was spooned. Now I'm just wondering if I should drop it over to my main and sell it, it's about 10 mil easy bond money, or if I should hold on to it and just use it because it comes pre-filled with three hours worth of manuscript pages. That's four pages. The pages aren't that hard to get, but it's, yeah, it's three pages. I might just drop it. I don't know. I'll think about it. All right, let's open up these troves. Not very exciting. Nothing super unique. I mean, I got some Pernix Quiver Fragments, so that's nice. And, you know, just your standard, your standard trove loot. And here are the Alcables. Almost 30 mil worth of Fire Battle Stabs and Orichalcum Salvage. We'll just pop those into the Alchemizer and come back for it later. All in all, I can say that this note on task was more than worth it. I certainly had fun seeing my progress over the course of those 133 kills. I guess that's why people enjoy PVM so much, seeking out every little optimization possible with the resources you have. It's a shame the loot isn't really that exciting. Ignoring rare drop table loot and uniques, the loot is pretty repetitive. Don't get me wrong, it's all useful, but it's not very varied. I'll be able to use all of it though. The stone spirits will make the masterwork armor grind a bit easier, the cannonballs will help it slayer, the apparently optimal magic chews through sovereigns, so it's good to have those. Royal dragon hide and dragon stones will make 99 crafting a bit less tedious than harps, and I'll need those dragon stones for porter charges anyway. I guess the dragon kin bones are kind of useless since I already have 99 banked with dinosaur bones. Yeah, oh well. With this grind done, I have to figure out what the next grind is gonna be, and I haven't put much thought into it just yet, so next time we'll meander a bit and do a little bit of here and there while we try to figure out what the hell is going on. Ain't that just life? Thanks for watching.